Well, folks, I've been bubbling away for 20 minutes to myself. So now I've sorted the problem as to why we're not recording. We'll do part two. I've now, of course, done the set. So we'll tell you what I've done rather than show you. This is going to be a short video. So behind the scenes I redid the power supply. So I changed the 1000 microfarad capacitor here to 2200 microfarads. Looking at the discussion on part one of this repair, we've already previously discussed and I've totally forgotten that the conclusion I think we've all come to is that this transformer should have a shield plate um, or be of a, a totally shrouded type for it not to cause the hum. So yes what I'm doing improves it but that is part of it. So that should be 1000 microfarads at 35 volts. I've put 2200 microfarads in uh, in line with anybody else's power supply of this part of the circuit. On the Cybernets with the 002F chassis like the Harvard 404, Harvard H407, they it's a slightly different board of course, but it's 3300 microfarads. And on the Cybernet 134s like we find in the Harrier CBHQ and the Midland 76900, the York 869, it's 4700. So 1000 is inadequate. But because they kept the 1000 on the board, uh, that I suppose helped a bit, so that and that are together. So that's changed from 1000 at 35 volts to 1000 at 35 volts, in other words, exactly the same part but a new one. And the three small ones are 100 microfarads at 35 volts. So that's done. These are all Nikki cons apart from that, which is another leading brand. So, the thing I've got this plugged in now. So we're on the mains. I did clean it up a little tiny bit. So have we got picture in picture on? We have. So transmit on the i I'm in the 30 watt scale, so four watts is there. So when I transmit but just over four watts. Exactly four watts. Just over four watts. So that's in line with what we had before. Because I set the power supply to 13.8 volts. Which I would did show you on the video which just didn't work. So where's my meter? And I'll show you we've got 13.8 volts. There you go, 13.86 if the wire's not in the way. So that's that set. I just had to do a little tiny twiddle. It was 13.89. Uh, so there we are. I just wanted it that little bit lower. So I've not had to do anything to the board except the meter preset for the S meter is here. So when we did the part one yesterday, the deviation was there for transmitted audio. The transmit power meter was there. So if I show you now, we're in the center of the red zone when we're going to transmit. And um, presumably we're still on stupidly low power, yeah, 100 milliwatts. Um, and I've discovered just now, or rediscovered, I probably knew before, that to set the S meter, which is this preset, we actually need to have set preset squelch first because they're interactive. When we look at the circuit diagram, we find, here's the squelch control, it's not because it doesn't use the MC3357 and uses a UPC 1028H, I think it is, 
uh, there's a quadrature tuning, in other words, the words, a detector, and it doesn't have a built-in squelch, as far as I can see. So what we've got is this end of it. We've got one end going to chassis. This end of it goes to variable resistor two, which in turn goes to the FM chip. It also goes to this preset, which is the S meter. So as you can imagine, the fact that this is grounded, altering that alters the S meter. So we needed to set this first, which we did. So our squelch, when I initially just uh, did it, never opens on tight and was a not very good 1.45 microvolts at threshold. After twiddling it to optimum, which is minimum, it still never opens. So does it actually open if we put a walkie-talkie next to it? Put the squelch to full, find out. No. So it still never opens. It's not a good design, that. And on minimum got the signal generator on we've got 0.48 microvolts which is excellent then with 7915 just get that on the signal generator We've got 100 microvolts at S9, just there. So that's now set the S meter. So it was a matter, as I said, doing the squelch and then doing, that's VR2, that's VR1, and that's our squelch, uh, squelch preset, S meter preset. So you haven't got a preset for low power, as we discovered yesterday. So that's it. There wasn't much to finish off, but I knew I'd got to do these capacitors, and yesterday it just wasn't the time to uh, to do that. I think we'd got to nine o'clock at night or something. And I didn't want to be trying to do an on the air test at 10 o'clock. So um, I think it's time to put the lid on it. I did when I took the capacitors out they did all read a bit dodgy. So if we put this base plate back. Now some of the screws some of the screws were still correct on the bottom. If, I, if I've got some new screws, which I might have, we'll add some into the equation. That's an original screw. One of the reasons they might be missing is because the holes have been expanded. It would be really nice if I didn't have to put any self-tappers back in the bottom. looks to me like that was the only original screw just to see if I've got any non-black ones on the bench another self tapper. It'd be nice just to put some better screws back. There's one that will fit.
Now they definitely put self tappers in the front, but they shouldn't be. exactly square is it anyway that's uh, that's got those in for a start I think four screws is probably what it had but we'll see if I've got more in a moment Let's put the lid on I did clean the front panel a bit not a lot, a bit. The only way you can get out of this situation with the wrong screws is to actually re tap. I'll see whether we can put some the correct screws in. Well, I would think is all the threads are ruined. Well, that's kind of refound its way into the proper thread. So they are M3, 6mm, the standard for screws in CB radios. I mean, there are some oddities, like the ones in DNTs at M2.5. And there are some sets that use self-tappers. Oh, that's gone in right now. Good. I'm just using screws which are on the bench, you know. They're not ones I'm taking out of a box which I've got to charge for, so... I'm trying to... Oh, there goes the door. OK, I was taking the parcels in from AliExpress. So there we go. So I've just got a few screws to put in the bottom. Not, I say it's not as square as it once was. Right. Uh, power it back up. Put the aerial in the bottom. In the bottom. We still need to change the mains plug because that type's no longer legal. It doesn't have the shrouded pins. I've said many times before it's an Antron 99 or similar which is an end fed dipole half 18 in 18 foot whatever it is um, mounted just above gutter height on a single story building broadside into an apex roof with concrete pan tiles. Yeah, 
they're either slate or concrete tile roofs in the UK. None of you asphalt. Roger. Good. And I'd already put the Delta tune in the best position according to the signal generator. And I'll just think about this. I'll just see if the knob's in the right position. Can you see we've got the we've got the marker and it's just there. Yeah, the knob is on in, in the right position, but on this set that is the uh, the best position for frequency accuracy. Can you actually set the Delta tune? Got the reference crystal and the, the tuning code transformer 14. And there the, is the Delta tune control. So no, it's, you're simply setting it for your best results. And on the test instruments, that was the best position. It's another thing for people to get wrong, and and then have a garbled radio. So there you go. So sorry it wasn't as in depth as I wanted because, as I said, I already recorded it, and I wasn't going to untune it and then redo it. So uh, there we go. So thank you for watching the part two of the Murphy CBH fifteen hundred which is a Spirit 40F in a big box. You can see we've got full 4-watt full, full output, and we'll see how it hums on the on-the-air test, which we're going to record right away.